welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We thank you for joining us. I am Lydia ODJ Ochi. The Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja says it will dispense justice with equity in the presidential election petition before it. The president of the court, who is leading the five-month panel of justices, Zainab Bukachua, gave the assurance at the inaugural sitting of the court, which is educating on the petitions arising from the conduct of the 2019 presidential election. Dele Atumbi reports. Unlike other election petition tribunals, the presidential election petition tribunal which domiciles in the Court of Appeal is not a tribunal but a court in section that adjudicates on election petitions with regards to the conduct of the presidential election. This court serves as the trial court for the presidential election with all the legal practitioners expected to rope in addressing the court that has exclusive jurisdiction on the matter. Addressing all the parties in the matter before it, the president of the court, Justice Zainab Bukashua, admonished all the parties to comport themselves in line with the rules of the court. Justice Bukashua assured the litigants of speedy dispensation of the petitions before it. Elections are held in Nigeria every four years into elective positions. No matter how well the election is conducted, they are bound to be complaints, hence the law provides for the setting up of election petition tribunals to look into these complaints in a speedy manner. No one is above the law, that everybody is equal before the law, and that the matter before your body is to be approved. Taking on this hands of international best practices of standards, and other sensitive and delicate assignment in this conflict this time. And I want to assure you, she was there on behalf of the other court that we have the finest behavior. Four petitions pending before the court came for mention with the petition filed by Ambrose Uwuru of Hope Democratic Party fixed for pre-airing next week Tuesday while that of Atiku Abubaka and the People's Democratic Party will be heard on Wednesday 15th May 2019. All the petitions are challenging the victory of President Mamadou Buhari in the February 23 presidential election. In all, 78 panels have been put in place to adjudicate over election petitions in the states of the Federation, excluding Jigawa State, where there is no petition. The tribunals will attend to 786 petitions across the country. And with Section 239 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, the Court of Appeal has exclusive jurisdiction over petition arising from presidential election. It has 180 days to adjudicate over the matter. 52 days are gone. And in the next 128 days, this court will be adjudicating over four matters. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. Thanks, Dele. President Muhammadu Buhari has inaugurated a 13-member governing board of the Northeast Development Commission in fulfillment of his administration's pledge of regenerating the socio-economic potentials of the region badly devastated by terrorism and insurgency. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that a take-off grant of 10 billion naira is provided for the commission in the 2019 budget in addition to the 45 billion naira appropriated for its operations under the Northeast Intervention Program. Legally backed by the 2017 Act of Parliament, the Northeast Development Commission is charged with the responsibility of receiving and effectively managing funds meant for the resettlement, rehabilitation, integration, and reconstruction of damaged infrastructure for both the public as well as victims of insurgency. President Muhammad Buhari, while inaugurating the board, said tackling the menace of poverty, illiteracy, ecological problems, and other developmental challenges in the region is also part of the Commission's mandate. It is therefore the expectation of this government and people of the zone that you will rapidly and systematically set to work to address all areas of your mandates in affair and equitable manner. You shall, as a matter of urgency, conduct comprehensive survey of all states in the zone to determine the reconstruction and rehabilitation needs of all the socio-economic sectors of the zone and develop 
and intervention master plan based on outcome of your assessments. For a start, the president said the process of resettlement and rehabilitation of the internally displaced persons to either their original homes or new communities must commence immediately towards bringing social cohesion in the region. You shall develop policies and implementation guidelines for immediate intervention in the development of the zone. Coordinate and promote civil military confidence building and put in stabilization measures that will ensure continued peace and social harmony, as well as avoid the reoccurrence of violence in the zone. Let me assure you that government shall continue to provide all the necessary and evident conditions that will facilitate the achievements of the above and ensure that all resources due to the commission are immediately made available to the commission. The 13 member governing board of the Northeast Development Commission carefully constituted based on proven track records of hard work and integrity is chaired by the former military governor of Oyo State, retired Major General Paul Tarfa from Adamawa State, while Muhammad al Kali from Borno State is the managing director and chief executive officer. Today, when we leave here now, we are going to sit down as a body in accordance with the uh, Commission's uh, dictates, we will meet and decide and choose our priorities. First, we look after the destitute, those people who are scattered all over the country. Then, we decide when to go to our headquarters in Maiduguri and then commence with earnest what's ahead of us. For the Buhari presidency, the establishment of the Northeast Development Commission is not only a fitting response to the devastating effect of the Boko Haram insurgency, but also an appreciation of the massive electoral support received from the area in both the 2015 and 2019 general elections. From the State House, Adam Sambo, NTA News. Gender equality and women's empowerment are critical to sustainable development. President United Nations General Assembly Maria Espinosa Garces said this when she engaged the representatives of Nigerian women at the National Center for Women Development. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday has details of this and her other meetings in Abuja. Four decades ago, women the world over celebrated the adoption of the elimination of all forms of discrimination against them. Dissatisfied with where women are today, Maria Espinosa is in Nigeria in continuation of her advocacy for the full inclusion of women and girls in efforts to achieve the sustainable development goals. She scored Nigeria high in the area of women development with a view to making other countries to take a cue. It is progress that 24% of parliamentarians are women. But this is not parity. We don't have parity yet. And we know that women in politics face enormous hurdles, including verbal, physical, and sexual abuse. This cannot continue. The federal government of Nigeria, under His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, created economic structures and infrastructures to facilitate investments and contribute to job creation for the teeming young population, especially women. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari, the wife of the president, has been pushing the issue of women forward, not only at national level but also at international level. Although Maria Espinosa prides herself as the first Latin American and fourth woman to attain the position of the president of the United Nations General Assembly, she advocates more higher position for women in all parts of the world. From the Women's Center, the president proceeded to University of Abuja, where she engaged the students on the need to do their best in order to excel in any field they have chosen. You are instinctively multilateral and multilateralists. This is why we cannot afford to exclude you from decision making. Some of the students had the opportunity to interact and tap from a wealth of experience and put in perspective their expectations. The UN as a mother body of all nations in the world should make 
and postulate a policy that would be and serve as a watchdog towards African leaders. The way to go about it is entrepreneurship. If youth can involve in entrepreneurship, do things for themselves, through that we can be able to develop our country and ourselves. Maria Espinosa arrived Nigeria from Chad and from here she will be proceeding to Ghana for the continuation of our official visit to the African region. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Moving on to legislative matters now. The Senate has called on government and financial institutions to support and ensure effective implementation of the new financial guidelines of the operations of local government accounts issued by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit. This followed a motion by Senator Aliou Sabi Abdullahi, which commended the agency and described the policy as a lifeline for local government system in Nigeria. The policy states that with effect from 1st June 2019, local government joint accounts will only serve as a receipt account for allocations with a daily cash transactions limit of 500,000 Naira. More now, the House of Representatives at Wednesday's plenary passed 10 bills, including that to amend the provisions of the Electoral Act of 2010 and for related matters. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nandim reports that while the bill for an act to amend the Industrial Development Income Tax Relief Act of 2004 and two others passed second reading, motions on urgent need for intervention in the illegal oil exploration, environmental pollution, epidemic outbreak, and criminal clashes as a result of operations of Sterling Global Oil Company at Oguikpele. Ogbaru Federal Constituency of Anambra State, moved by Representative Chukuka Onyema from Anambra State, was adopted. Other motions adopted include that to investigate the fraudulent activities in the Presidential Amnesty Program moved by Representative Tajuddin Obasa from Lagos State. Details of this and more in subsequent bulletins. As the ECOWAS Parliament reconvenes for its first ordinary session this year, the Speaker of the Parliament, Mustafa Siselo, says there has been substantive progress made for the desired integration of the people, despite some challenges. Joseph Orok has details of the session. from the Moroccan team that were on observation mission at the session, the opening session of the parliament also had special guests in attendance. Speaker Mustafa Sisilo says the parliament will continue to sensitize and mobilize the people of the sub-region to appreciate and apply the various protocols of ECOWAS for the benefits of the people. He announced plans by the parliament to ensure that the groundbreaking for the permanent sites of the legislature in Abuja holds before the end of the ordinary session. The president of ECOWAS Commission, Jen Cloud Cassibrau, says peaceful parliamentary elections were held in Guinea-Bissau, while the recent parliamentary elections in Bene took place amidst tension. He, however, says ECOWAS will continue to intervene in member countries to support peaceful elections. The three weeks ordinary session of the ECOWAS Parliament in Abuja is for the Parliament to consider and adopt the delocalized meeting in Guinea-Bissau and Ghana, as well as attain to the various countries' reports of the sub-region. In Abuja, Joseph Orok, NTA News. For more stories on Nationwide, let's go over to Leg uh, Lagos Neto Center, where Ruth is standing by. Over to you. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Lagos. Journalism in the 21st century is technology-driven, and for practitioners to operate optimally, they must keep up with digital innovations in the evolving world of information and communication. It is against this background that foremost cyber company Google organized a training session for news writers and producers in Lagos. Paul Omukagu has details. This Google training is one of many steps by the NTA to boost the productivity of the staff 
here at the Lagos Network Center. We were talking about how to use digital tools to improve their trades and how to use Google tools to tell better stories, research better stories, find better stories, verify stories, and be able to ensure that Nigerians and people globally around the world, uh, that the kind of stories that they're reading from them are more data informed and that those stories um, help people understand a bit more about what's going on. I'm excited about the Google reverse search which gives you information about a picture that you may have ended up using wrongly. But this time around, you'll find information regarding that picture that will make you use it appropriately. It teaches us how to use Google in data in broadcasting, how to search, how to localize your search, how to get verified information from Google, using Google. Everything in the world is changing even the way we tell stories. And data is helping to give more insight um, in storytelling. And newsrooms all around the world are imbibing data journalism. And of course, NTA, we don't want to be left out. You need some of the tools that have been taught here today to do a proper research and get what you want in order to aid your story. There's also another one called in-text. Over to you in the studio. Thank you, Paul. Capacity building efforts of the Nigerian Army helps officers reevaluate their performances for better services. Sir Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, in a message, expressed confidence that effective logistic support has improved the Army's capabilities to tackle security challenges across the country. Dr. Oguyemi reports. The multidimensional phase of security threats from banditry, kidnapping, arms smuggling, armed robbery, insurgency and terrorism are challenges that security agencies are tackling head-on. Logistics plays a vital role for the army, which is why this seminar is well-timed to addressing them. The Nigerian army is involved in internal security operations in virtually all the states in the country employing relevant tactics and strategies necessary to surmount the threats. While the tacticians and strategies fashion our best ways to address the threat, the logistician concerns himself with the best means of sustaining the force. The need for the logisticians to efficiently sustain the troops is the essence of this seminar. The participants drawn from 2nd, 6th, 81 and 82 divisions of the Nigerian Army are learning new skills for effective logistic support for operational readiness. There is no doubt that the conduct of this seminar is timely going by the nature of warfare confronting the Nigerian Army. The focus of the training is on effective logistic support in various army operations across the country and building a sustainable logistic architecture. In Lagos, Dotsun Ogunyemi, NTA News. The Lagos State Police Command says it will step up efforts in crime prevention and detection through use of security dogs. This was at the inauguration of renovated facility and equipment at the dog section at Area F in Ikeja, Lagos. Jason Tom Moses reports. Police dogs are used for crowd control, perimeter surveillance, and cordoning. Sniper dogs help in detecting illicit drugs, explosives, and concealed arms. The ceremony witnessed simulation of various of these functions of the dogs. The Commissioner of Police in charge of Force Animal Branch and the Lagos State Police Commissioner were both optimistic that the upgraded facilities at the canine unit will further boost performance of personnel in the unit. You can conceal drugs or you can conceal um, arms, explosive, whatever, in a box or in a car or somewhere. You can easily pass by as human being, you might not notice it, but the dog has is endowed with very effective olf olfactory organ that it can easily use its nose to know even in my minute quantity of that substance, in micrograms of that uh, substance. A dog can perform the job of 10 policemen. It is worldwide. Everybody accepts that. So if we empower you know, the canine section, as they have done today, I think it's going to 
reducing even the crime rate in Lagos. Police canine section was established in 1963 at Obalindi, Lagos, with six dogs and six handlers. Its main function was to prevent and detect crime through dogs. In Lagos, Jess Hutton, Moses, and TN News. That's our contribution from Lagos. More on security after this commercial break. The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is tolerance in Islam to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, the Awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Hall, River Road, Jabi Road, East, Gwarimi Jari, Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Berkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the chief host is His Excellency Malam Nasr Ahmed Er Rufai, the executive governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris, CFA, MF Zezo. The host are Malin Yakubin Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Malam Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Osta Kichiku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, announce our organizing committee. You are welcome. <laughs> NTA Television College JOS announces admissions into two-year diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA state capital stations, zonal centers, or at the office of the academic secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JOS. On payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 Naira in bank draft in favor of NTA NTA TV College. Applicants can also obtain the forms through the NTA TV College portal at www.ntatvc.edu.nj. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatvc.com or call 0803-3144-383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, Real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News. Breaking the news for over 40 years. Nationwide continues in Abuja. Now on security. Addressing the nation's emerging security threats through enhanced interagency collaboration is the focus of a training session for the armed forces. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa was at the National Defense College, venue of the event. The asymmetric warfare and unconventional security challenge is the dominant security threat confronting Nigeria and Nigerians. This emerging threat requires more multidimensional approach to effectively tackle the menace currently truncating socioeconomic activities in Northeast Nigeria. Though there are a series of ongoing joint operations, the Defense Headquarters has noticed an existing gap with emphasis on concept, doctrine, procedures and policies making the training apt. Historically, the forces of Nigeria conducted more single service operations with varying level of support from sister services. However, 
Recently, the place of joint and combined operations have necessitated the need for numerous joint efforts to address our challenges. It is crucial not just for achieving physical security of lives and property, but principally because the level of success we are able to achieve in the management of the contender security issues here will demonstrate how diligent we could be in resolving all other problems as a nation. Participants at the training are drawn from the Army, Navy and Air Force. From the Defense Headquarters in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTNU. Now, the spate of insecurities such as banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery, cattle rustling, and criminal clashes as well as insurgency, amongst others, call for joint collaboration by all citizens for effective policing. Guests on Tuesday Live emphasize the need for a policy framework that will enhance better funding of the community policing strategy and capacity building for those involved. Doidia reports. Having been globally accepted, the concept of community policing was first introduced in Nigeria in 2004 to complement security agents' efforts at securing the nation. Even though it was not domesticated by all states of the Federation, the concept was said to have achieved its aim, especially in the few areas where it was introduced. The recent spate of violent crimes and its adverse consequences on national development informed the decision by President Muhammad Buhari to again revisit it and call for domestication across board. Guests on Tuesday Live stressed the need for the engagement of community leaders, professional and religious bodies, and all stakeholders for effective collaboration that will keep out crime out of the communities. Going by the evidence of our eyes, recently in terms of the crime situation, in terms of people's perception of policing, it means that philosophy has not gone down the way it was intended. I think another thing that's also happened is that it doesn't have any legal backing. And we know that in, in, in Nigeria, once something doesn't have any legal backing, then there's a problem with it. But the beauty is that the bill that was recently passed by the National Assembly um, under Section 107 of, of the Nigeria Police um, 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 Bill that is currently before the National Assembly, there is provision for community policing. And also with the force of support that the president is given, and then the IG is, is also given, I think that is a good way to continue this process. It is the AIG and the CP commands of those zones that are the change agents who are supposed to be driving the concept of community policing in those areas. So what I'm trying to say is that this concept has already been integrated into the mainstream of policing by Nigeria Police Force. On efficiency and sustenance of the community policing strategies, funding and proper orientation, the noted is key. Since funding is said to be a major challenge to the effective running of community policing in Nigeria, guests on the show emphasize the need for state government to support the cause. All the governors will do whatever it takes to make sure security is enhanced in this country. So uh, I'm sure if the police will come up with a robust uh, protocol on what to do, the governors will certainly assist and I will take this message to the governor's borough. The panelists agree that there is the need to revisit the social system, especially the family institution, to reorientate the youth. These, they say, we also serve as a good mechanism for proper profiling of individuals to be recruited into the police force. In Abuja, doing dear anti news. To tackle insecurity in River State, Governor Nyeso Wike has given marching orders to some critical key players with a promise to come hard on anyone who disregards law and order. Ogedi Nyekwere reports on the outcome of a joint security meeting in Government House, Port Harcourt, with traditional rulers and council area authorities. 
The meeting followed the resolutions reached at the State Security Council meeting earlier ahead to address security infractions in some parts of the state. Governor Wike enjoined the stakeholders to work in tandem with his administration to fight insecurity in their various communities. He noted that restive communities across the state will no longer enjoy the goodwill of government. Communities where we have so much of courtism and kidnapping, if you're a chief, and you recognize that we will depose you. Governor Wike also directed the council authorities in Emohua, Ikwere, Akotoro, Asari Toru, Degema, and the Ogoni Aziz to clear bushes along the highways in their areas that pose security threat. Commissioner of Police, Usman Dele, reiterated the commitment of the security agencies in the state to fight crime and criminality. We will use the community policing strategy Present at the joint security meeting are all service commanders in the state. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. Now to transport. The Abuja Railway Station Idu, in collaboration with the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, has commenced retraining of private guards within the FCT and Kaduna State on modern techniques of averting theft and intelligence gathering within train stations. Ike Chuku Ndukwe reports. As a responsive organization, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has begun retraining of his guards across stations, railway stations in the country, in order to beef up security along railway stations. The training is to further boost the public confidence on the safety of lives and property in railway stations across the country. The guards were trained on methods of gathering intelligence and sharing same with conventional security personnel at the station for effective security of travelers' lives and property. We take the issue of security very serious, more so that we are experiencing challenges, security challenges on the Abuja Kaduna roads and now it has led to so many passengers now coming to patronize the, the trains. So we want to give the passenger confidence on the service that we render on this corridor. You now as we come to this place, we see some people, we see some peripherals. And what we call peripherals, those who still pay their bit by bit, we are going to teach them something of that. At least they will know the strategy, at least what they are going to map out to be able to at least if something of that nature happens. This training is in response of public outcry on the increasing crime wave along Abuja Kaduna Road. In Abuja, Ikechukundukwe, NTA News. Moving on now, Nigeria's quest to be Africa's aviation hub can be realized in the near future if the current efforts of the federal government in the aviation sector are sustained. This came from the Executive Secretary, Nigerian Christian Pilgrim Commission, NCPC, Reverend Touja, after a guided tour of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport ahead of the Easter pilgrimage to commence in June this year. Details in this report. The ongoing operations tour of strategic airports in the country by the Nigerian Christian Pilgrim Commission is to strengthen partnership for stronger synergy to ensure a successful Easter pilgrimage. It is only at the start of airlifting of pilgrims to Holy Lands that officials of the Nigerian Christian Pilgrim Commission come on visits to various airports across the country. Even then, attention is mostly on the pilgrims taking off. On this day, the NCPC, led by the Executive Secretary, Reverend To Uja, are having a detailed operations on the workings at the airport ahead of the airlift of Easter pilgrims. An impressed To Uja advocated construction of airports in all states to facilitate international business. If our airports are properly sanitized, I do not think cabals will have a chance. All the checks, screening, immigration, drug, everything. And we have on ground portals standby to check them. Double checks on medical fitness and intending pilgrims improved management of goods and artifacts by the airport authorities and government agencies such as the NCPC were stressed so that pilgrimage to Holy Lands will be smooth and efficient. In Lagos, 
Nigerians have been advised to disregard a report in circulation on social media stating that the federal government plans to pay Mieti Allah 100 billion naira to persuade its members to allow peace reign in the country. A joint statement by the group's chairman, Ni Akinsiju, and secretary, Cassidy Madwekwe, described the information as untrue and the handiwork of mischief makers who are bent on casting the federal government in bad light. It also states that the purported payment of 100 billion naira to the Mieti Allah is the figment of the imagination of the originators and purveyors of the fake news and has no iota of truth. The media organization restates that the Buhari administration is a responsible and responsive government that will not deviate from its commitment to due process, rule of law, and fiscal responsibility. We now go over to a just network center for more, for more stories on Nationwide. And Felicia is our guide. Over to you. Thank you, Lydia. Welcome to JOS. Promotion of voluntary service, neutrality, and unity of communities have been advocated as effective steps towards ensuring the universality of people. This is the thrust of the World Red Cross Day marked in Jos Plateau State. Ashesi Gopeb has the details. World Red Cross Day is celebrated every year on 8th of May to commemorate the principles of International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement of helping people in need during armed conflict, natural disaster and other emergencies. There are still needs on ground. So the ICRC with the Nigerian Red Cross does the best it can to be able to assist uh, people that are affected by armed conflict. As movement of voluntary people who are prepared to give a selfless service to, uh, to the needy. In Jos, the International Committee of Red Cross organized a series of events. One of such is a talk through some major streets in Jos, creating awareness and encouraging volunteers to promote their humanitarian activities. Services are provided regardless of your religion, regardless of your ethnic background. Even as volunteers, we find joy. We don't expect any pay from it. One thing that we know in Red Cross is that the little you bring will do more than you have. With effective participation and support in voluntary service, members say will ensure unbiased assistance to people in need. 2019 World Red Cross Day theme is love. The theme will mainly focus on asking people on what they love about Red Cross and Red Crescent. In Jos, Ashesi Gopek, NCA News. Worried by the increasing rate of crime across the country, the federal government is training community and religious leaders on robust and functional partnership that will enhance their capacity in conflict prevention and alternative dispute resolution. Ben Mitu reports that the workshop was put together by the Rule of Law Advisory Team of the Office of the Vice President of Nigeria holding in Jos. The dramatic and sophisticated dimension that the turbulent security landscape has taken in recent years is what propelled the federal government's bottom-to-top approach to finding lasting solution to criminality that is ravaging some states of the federation. This workshop, which has community and religious leaders and other interest groups as participants, will train them on conflict prevention, resolution and management, as well as skills on alternative dispute resolution which they will in turn step down to members of their communities. So at the end of this blended workshop, it is expected that participants will understand the different level of conflict, understand how to engage each level of conflict. So the workshop will also sharpen the skills of participants on how to identify criminals among them and hand them over to security agencies. These criminals do not come from the moon. They live in us. They are our brothers, our children. We know them if we will resolve to expose these criminals. And if they know that there is a resolve to expose them, we won't be having this problem. The training will also be replicated in other six states that are being ravaged by different forms of criminality. In Jos, then 
Me too. At the end. That's our contribution from Joss. It's back to you, Lydia, for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Felicia. The plight of internally displaced persons in the country has continued to be of concern to the federal government, who through various agencies provide succor aimed at amelior ameliorating their suffering. Messin too reports that the recent was a donation of relief materials by the Nigerian Maritime and Safety Agency, NIMASA, to flood victims in Cross River State. These are people selected from over 55,000 persons in different communities of Cross River State who have been displaced due to crises such as flood, fire outbreak, communal clash, among others. The distribution of relief materials is part of the agency's corporate social responsibility to help victims get back on their feet and have a better life. NIMASA is carrying out this um, service to the IDPs in order to show that we empathize with them, that we identify with them for what they are going through. That's what we expect other agencies you know, to you know, also try to do to alleviate the sufferings of uh, the IDPs in Cross River State. The beneficiaries could not hold their joy. We believe that as they have come, they will not relent their effort. Without love, they could not bring us this thing. We are thank God I give them love about us. Cross River State is one of the 20 benefiting states in the country. In Calabar, Messenger, NTA News. We still have more on humanitarian gestures. We now go over to Benin with Ogwa Chukuka. She has more stories for us. Over to you. Lydia in Abuja, thank you for joining us and a very good afternoon. Immigration officers' wives in Edo State want corporate and religious bodies, government at all levels, and other well meaning Nigerians to identify with orphans and persons with special needs in the society. This was when they visited an orphanage in Benin City. Judah Weke reports. Ten year old Usare Melato, nicknamed First Lady, is an orphan at the Mommy's Orphanage in Benin City. She was brought to the orphanage in 2010 as an abandoned baby dumped in a pit toilet around Apapava Aziz in Benin City, where worms damaged her eyes. Yes, my mommy showed me inside the pit toilet. I cannot make her see very well. They give us to go to university hospital. It's cancer that is so damaged, except they go to, to India. We have been looking for help. We never see any help. The plight of young Osari men and that of other orphans residing at the Mommy's orphanage informed the visit of the wives of immigration officers in Edo State. Present these items, beddings, toiletries, food items to this orphanage or Mommy's orphanage. We hope this show of love will go a long way to meet the needs of the children here. Every child is our child. In any little way you can, help someone who is crying for need. The orphans expressed their appreciation. May God bless them and their business shall continue to go and higher in Jesus' name. For the association, it will continue to extend kindness to the less privileged in the society, especially the likes of Osarime Latu, who hopes to become first lady. In Benin, Jude Aweke, NTNs. And now to security matters. 10 CNR buses have been donated to security outfits in Edo State by the state government. Nine of the vehicles are for the police and one for the army to help curb crime and criminality in the state. Elizabeth Wotoma reports. The beneficiaries are the army formation situated at Igobazua in Ovia Southwest local government area, Igobahi, Uromi, Ubiaja. Auchi and Igara area commands of the police force. Others are Egba, Osaso, and Jatu divisions. The need for the donation of the cars arises from various crime reports in some parts of the state in recent times. The governor also has approved another set for various donations. And they have said every month they will be reviewing and uh, releasing different sets in line with that commitment to uh, uh, provide
provide security and watch for our people and to reduce crime. Working with other security agencies to ensure that adult people sleep with their eyes closed is one target the security agencies set to achieve with promise to put the vehicles to good use. In Benin, Elizabeth continues. The need for Muslims and non-Muslims alike to use the window of Ramadan to promote unity was the focus of the ninth pre-Ramadan lecture of NTA Benin Network Center. Adobe Jojeba has details. The lecture was driven by the team Ramadan, a panacea to Islamophobia. It tackles with deafness the incessant clashes and happenings around the northeast region of the country. Allah says, use good to pay back. Do not use bad to pay back. It was an auspicious time for notable personalities to promote peace and unity. The issue of Islamophobia is not just an issue that you blame non-Muslims. The Muslims too should suck their conscience and be good Muslims. I have to thank uh, the Zona Director, Management and Staff of NCAB in the Zona Centre for this wonderful work they have been doing for the Muslims for the past nine years. They have always organized pre-Ramadan lectures to enlighten, to inform the Muslim. Uh, it's to foster understanding amongst the, all the religious groups and he explained to us the tenets of Islam, that uh, the, what is happening around the world that has been associated with Islam has nothing to do with the religion. Virtually all those, see, all those you see committing crime here and there bombing and honestly Muslim. The Nigerian Television Authority pre-Ramadan lecture is an annual event to promote the tenets of Islam. In Benin, Adobeji Ojegba, NTA News. We rejoin Lydia as the news continues in Abuja. Many thanks, Agochukuka. Now to matters concerning labor. The crisis over the inauguration of the board of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund NSITF took another dimension this Wednesday as the attempt by the NLC to picket the residents of the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngigi, turned violent. who later addressed the media said they will continue to mobilize against the decision of the minister not to inaugurate the NSITF board. And as Nigerians join the rest of the world to celebrate 100 years of the International Labour Organization which brought social justice in the place of work, the need to prepare to cope with the new challenges arising from the future of the workplace is a task before the ILO for another 100 years to come. Emmanuel Ayimiro reports that the 60 years of ILO in Africa was also marked with recognition of some social partners. Established in 1919, the International Labor Organization has impacted positively on the workplace through a number of conventional standards which have helped to improve livelihood and enthrone sustainable development. Of 45 countries in 1919, the ILO has now grown to 187 countries at the start of 19, 2019. I'm particularly delighted that in this room today we have Three governing body members of the ILO, Nigeria is represented on the governing body by the workers' delegates, the employers' delegates, and soon the government will be represented as a full titular member on the governing body of the ILO. Imagine a world where we don't have global standards and the right at work. A world where it will be the survival of the fittest. Or a world where we'll be celebrating only wealth without also celebrating social justice. As we celebrate the productive years of service by ILO to us, all its constituents, we should recommit ourselves to the laudable obligations commended to us through the Declaration of Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work. Nigeria's relationship with the ILO started in 1959 when it became the first African country where ILO office was established since then, 
over 40 ILO's conventions have been ratified and domesticated. It is our sincere hope that the next 60 and 100 years will be more promising and beneficial than the last. Three prominent socio partners of the tripartite body were honored with the ILO Centenary Award. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NT News. Still to come is sports and other reports after this break. When you think about hospitality and affordable luxury away from home, then you talk about Sharon Ultimate Hotels, a secured and serene environment that offers kingly services such as 24-hour room service, impeccable security with CCTV surveillance, parking lot, free Wi-Fi internet service, free complimentary breakfast, restaurants that offers continental and local dishes, well-equipped fitness center with instructors, swimming pool, 350 capacity multi-purpose hall, laundry service, pastry corner, mini mat, and our suites are breathtaking. For reservation, locate us at plot 1710, Tafawa Balewa Way, Area 3, Garikia, Buja, Charan Ultimate Hotels, the ultimate place. Do you desire to improve your grammar and sharpen your pronunciation skills? If your answer is yes, then you need to attend a special four weeks course on English grammar and pronunciation for broadcasters organized by NTA Television College, JOS. The course will expose participants to the nitty gritty of English grammar and usage, which will enable them to speak fluently and write as well as edit scripts flawlessly. Journalists, presenters, scriptwriters, television and radio news editors, secretaries, masters of ceremonies, and host of live events will find the course highly beneficial. Date, 13th May to 7th June 2019. Venue, NTA Television College, Rayfield, Joss. Course fee, 100,000 Naira per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more inquiries, please call 0803-3144-383 or 806 9809 you can also visit our website on www.ntatvc.com. NTA Television College Joss, training you to be the best you want to be. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng for live streaming. Visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Let's join Amanzi Marcos for sports update. <laughs> 